Hello, in this tutorial we will create an auto-scaling group which runs web servers based upon an AMI that we create ourselves and use an elastic file system as the document route for the instances in the auto-scaling group. And in total that will be seven steps, creating the file system, security groups, key pairs for the instances, to creating an AMI, a target group, and a load balancer, and finally the auto-scaling group itself. And we will do that in this particular order. So let's start with creating the file system. So we start in the web console and we go to EFS, which is where we can create a file system. And we haven't got any file system yet, so we create the first one, which we call web EFS. And of course, we have to pick the correct VPC in which we want to create it, which would be our uadmin demo. And then we create a standard file system, which will generate mount targets in all availability zones that have networks installed, so that have a subnet. And when we check the network environment, we see that we have two mount targets in two different availability zones, and it's still creating. That will take some time, and after some time, they will be available. So that's step one. We've created our first file system. Now we have to create uh, two security groups, one for the clients that want to access the web servers, and one for the mount targets. So let's first create the security group for the web servers. So we see two default security groups. We ignore those and we create our own web security group. And let's give it a description called web access. And we will create this security group in our uadmin demo VPC. Then we add a rule. And the first rule we add would be the HTTP protocol. So port 80 will be opened for the world. So everybody will be able to access our web service. Then we add a second rule, and that will be port 22. But that will not be for the world. It will be my own IP address as the only address that's allowed to access um, using port 22. And then we create the security group, and it's done. Then we add a second security group, which would be the one we're going to be using for the mount targets. Now, this is the EFS security group that will only need port 2049 to be open for NFS protocol. And again, it should be our uadmin demo VPC in which we create the security group and we add a rule for the inbound traffic, which would be NFS, which is all the way down and that would give us port 2049 and in this case we will only allow traffic from any resource that has the web security group in use so that will limit access to only our EC2 instances and then finally we go back to the security groups and give these two new security groups a valid name which should make it easier for us to find them so we have the web EFS security group and we've got the web security group itself. And we save that and we're done with the security groups. But now we have to connect the EFS security group to the mount targets so that our clients will be able to mount the file system. So we go to network and we manage the network where we first delete the default security groups. We don't need those and we add the EFS security group to both mount targets so that our clients will be able to mount the file system. And that's done. We will generate a key pair for the EC2 instances that we want to deploy in our auto scaling group. Uh, the reason we do that is we want to have access to these EC2 instances to install some software and that's where we could very well use port 22. So we first go to key pairs and then we create uh, a new key pair and we name it the London web key pair. It will be RSA, it will be .pem and we simply create the pair. We save it to our desktop and that's done. There's one thing we uh, shouldn't forget is change the permissions to read only for that particular key pair. Otherwise, 
Uh, if we don't change the permission to read only for this key, then we will not be able to connect. So we first have to change that to read only for the owner of the file. Then we create the AMI. So we want this AMI to have an EFS mount at boot time and also the web server should be started at boot time. So we go to EC2 and we have to launch an instance. So we go to launch instances. Let's call it the web server. Let's keep it simple. We call it web server and we choose the AMI uh, Linux 2 and stick with T2 Micro, which is a relatively cheap instance then we use our key don't forget that we use the london web key and of course we pick our uadmin demo vpc and let's pick net one which is the first subnet in our vpc and we enable auto assign ip so if we don't do that we won't have a public ip won't be able to connect then the security group would be the web security group which allows port 22 and we go to advanced details. Just for the fun of it, we go down to the user data part and we run a yum update. We could do a lot more in here, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do that later. So we view all instances. And as you see, it's pending and now it's running. So we've got a running instance to which we can now connect. And we will do that. So we go and copy this SSH line into our terminal so we go to the directory where we have our key and then we run ssh i the london web key and specify the ip address or the dns name then we log into the system and run a sudo bash because we want to be root we run a yum install and install the web server which is httpd and once that's done we install the amazon efs utilities which is the second set of software we need and that's it now to mount this file system into this ec2 instance we of course need the name of the file system so we go back to efs and simply take this dns name of the file system and put it in a buffer and then we go back to the terminal and we mount the file system to the document root of this ec2 instance which would be var www html and we don't need the entire DNS name, just the file system name, and we mount it like this. And when we check, we see that this file system is mounted into this EC2 instance, to the document root of the web server. Now, to make this also happen when you reboot your machine, which would be nice, and also this will be in the image later, so that will be a static entry in the fstab file, which will automatically mount the file system when you reboot or when you boot the system for the first time. Now forget about these two last zeros. These are for local file systems, has to do with checking and the dumping. We don't need that, but the rest should be in there. So let's check that. So we first unmount the file system. So we unmount HTML and we do a DF and we see that it's no longer mounted. Now we mount it by just using the directory name and it will get the information from the FSTAB file and it will mount it. So this will also happen when you boot your system. So the next thing we do is we create an index.html and we will put it in the var www html directory, which is the Elastic file system that we just mounted. So we're all set. We've got our document root configured with an index.html. Then we open up EC2, we get to our instance, copy the IP address and check whether it works. And we see hello. So we're actually accessing the Elastic file system index.html via our uh, web server, which is running HTTPD. Then we can take this instance and create an image of it. So we go to image and templates and we create an image of this running instance. The image name, so the AMI name will be web image. Uh, the description is whatever you like. Let's call it HTTPD and EFS utils installed, whatever. Then we scroll down a little bit and we run the creation of the image. That will take some time. 
So when we go to our images, which is under AMIs, and we see that our web image is being created right now because the status is pending, that will really take a couple of minutes. And once this image is complete, we can then start using it in our launch template. So let's create the launch template. So first we go to EC2 once more and scroll down a little bit and we see the launch templates. We create the launch template and we name it the Demo Web EFS Launch Template. We can give a description, whatever we like. So this would be the demo for web server with EFS. Then we go down and we select our own image, which would be not sent to us. That's another one. We want to use the web image we just created. Then we have to take the instance type and we go for a cheap one, which would be T2 micro. Then of course we need the key pair, which would be our London web key. And we can select the subnet. Right, we can do that in here, but once we start using the auto scaling group, that would not be very relevant anymore. But we select net one right now, and the security group obviously has to be the web security group with port 80 open. Then we go to advanced network configuration, and just to make sure, we're going to give it a public IP address. So an auto assigned public IP will give us the opportunity to log in to every individual machine if we like to. And then we create the launch template. We've got a couple of more things to do. We have to create a target group and a load balancer first. So we go to back to EC2. And we need to go down a little bit where we find the target groups. So we first create a target group, which will hold our instances based upon the auto scaling group. So we need to select the instance target type here instead of something else. Then the target group name will be the target group dash web. Port will be port 80. It will be our uAdmin demo VPC. And we can skip the rest and simply say next. Then, of course, we have um, the web server, which is up and running. We can ignore these machines. We simply create a target group, and this target group will be target group web. And that's done. If there's no instances associated, no load balancer associated, we're going to do that later. So first we create the load balancer, and we pick the application load balancer. We can pick one of these three, but we're going to use it for the web, so we need layer 7, which would be the best for us. So we create an application load balancer. We call it web load balancer. It should be internet facing, meaning clients from the internet will access it, not internal clients. Then it should be in our uAdmin demo VPC once more. And here is an important one. We select the two subnets that we want this load balancer to be working for. So it will balance the load between the two subnets. And we go and select our security group. So clients will access port 80 worldwide. And we can leave all that to the default and create the load balancer. So we have a target group. And of course, sorry, we have to add the target group and connect it to the load balancer. Otherwise, there is no relationship. So this load balancer will forward all traffic to all instances that are part of that target group. So we view the load balancer once more, and it is up and running. And now we do is we take the DNS domain name, and we can use that later. So just put it in a buffer and forget about it. Now we create the auto scaling group and connect it to the target group. So we go all the way down where we will find the auto scaling group. So we click on it and we create the auto scaling group. We give it a name, anything you like. We call it the web ASG. Then um, we have to pick the launch template. So that will take our AMI and deploy it in the auto scaling group. So we go next. 
important thing the VPC is not the default VPC but it's our own VPC uAdmin demo and we have to select the subnets important choices here we want to run both subnets so we want to have images deployed in both subnets so we click next then there's a health check of five minutes which is way too long for us 120 seconds is more than enough uh, of course we do have a load balancer which is an existing load balancer and we select our target group to uh, configure that auto scaling group to be used by the load balancer so we continue and we want to have a desired capacity of two instances a minimum of two instances and a maximum of four instances now we can use a target tracking scaling policy and we have a choice between CPU utilization network and load balancer request counts per target well it's not that interesting we're not going to talk about performance and stuff like that so just go for CPU utilization and leave the target at 50 we say next and we say next once more and we're nearly done now when we check all of this out so like this is the summary of what we have configured and we create the auto scaling group so now we have our auto scaling group and when we open it and check it we will see in the activity that two instances have been launched so these two instances because we have uh, a minimum of two instances and a desired of two to start with so two instances are being launched and they're still pending so that will take some time but once they're up and running we should be able to contact now let's get the IP address of our load balancer which would be 18 170 162 111 and we pick that IP address put it in our uh, browser and we run a refresh and we see that we have a working auto scaling group so what we have built is an elastic file system with two mount targets that is being used by an auto scaling group that has web servers running that mount the elastic file system and we have an elastic load balancer up front that can accept the request from clients on the internet 